I am here vibing with reggae royalty. Actually, the queen of reggae. Her parents named her Lynette Griffiths, but we know her as... Marcia Griffiths. Sister Marcia, yes, how are sir. you? I am wonderful and I'm giving thanks. You don't have to do look life. up COVID here. Yeah. It's an honor. It's a joy. This is where the world has brought us today. Yes. The love is taken away slowly, but we know that we have it within our hearts. Amen. I introduced you as Lynette Griffiths. <laughs> and the world know you as Marcia Griffiths. But Marcia is not the actual name. No, it's an adopted name. Oh. Because I hated. I don't know where my mother find that name. <laughs> This is yours truly, Marcy Griffiths, and you're watching Teach Them. Leave it right where you got it. Don't touch the dial now. Teach them to the world. Marcy Griffiths said that. Teach them. Always make sure the message I reach them. Empress, Queen, Lady Marcia, looking radiant. Yeah. <laughs> First and foremost, congratulations on your most recent award that you received the other day. Yeah. Um, the accolade still keeps coming in. The recognition still keeps raining in. Yeah, we are thankful for all recognition because it's a motivation for me yes. to know that I am still being recognized. So I, it gives me, you know, Drive. I want to bring out more to give more of myself. Awesome. But I'm still waiting for the reward. You're still waiting for the reward? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that will come shortly, I, I, I trust. I'm hoping. Yes, but well, talk to us though, Sister Marcia, as you are affectionately called. Um, place of birth though, where did you grow up? I was born in Hannatown, Kingston. Yeah. Oxford Street. Three sisters and a brother. Well, four sisters, one pass oh, at early age. My condolences. Thank you. And um, we consider Hannatown at that time as a beautiful residential area. No, it's ghetto. Yeah. But even <laughs> if it was ghetto at the time, I can tell you that kings and queens comes out of ghetto. Emerge, yes. yes. So true. So you true. You know, so um, I started singing in schools yeah and church i never even recognized that i was i had given a god-given talent because yeah. my two other sisters they sing beautiful and because our parents were so strict <laughs> we stayed in and all three of us would just sing, sing and harmonize if a fly past me i harmonize it i just loved harmony that's how i started yes. out harmonizing so we were always indoors singing gospel songs, harmonizing. When school concerts, we take major part in it, performing church choir and everything like that. But it was not until 1964. Yes. When a friend of mine, she, her boyfriend was Philip James. Um, Philip James from the Blues Blue Busters. Bo yeah, I think his, his, his Monica was Boise at the time. No, they call no. him Bossy. 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 Oh, Bossy, okay, yes. And he came to visit Dolly, his girlfriend. And I was outside singing a song that this guy who lives in the same yard had written. The song is called Wall of Love. Yeah. He wrote the song. And of course, I love to harmonize. So while he was singing the song, I was harmonizing it. Mm. And Bossy came on and he heard me singing and he says, Wow, this little girl can sing. I was what, 11 at the time? Young. I was going to be 12 November. Okay. <clears throat> so then he said, Boy, this little girl, you have to come and perform on um, Carib Theatre Easter Monday. He, Blues Busters were already on the show, so he said he was going to talk to Byron and... That's Byron Lee? Byron Lee, yeah. Mm. When he came back after going to Byron and begging and beseeching, Byron so said, had to beg. Absolutely no. <laughs> he said, My show is already planned and can't accommodate anybody else. And he said, Byron, you have to put on this little girl one song. And then he had asked me what song I wanted to do. Philip. 
Philip James and yeah. I said I love Carla Thomas, no time to lose. That song was so popular at the time. So after begging, I went to the rehearsal at Byron's house yeah. and rehearsed that one song, No Time to Lose. But guess what? The morning of the concert, I walked on the stage. I was so sure myself. Yeah. I never had any you fear. You nervous? No nervousness. And then Bossy said to me, make sure the Lynette just go there and just give your best cause. I don't want to let him down. Yeah. And when I went out there, I don't know that you mustn't turn around and look on the band and all that. So I am standing there waiting for the guitar, which is a person who starts the lead. Yes. This song, the no time to lose. Die, da, da, die. And then I come in with the song. You see from I come on here, nothing. And the <laughs> audience started to get you could hear them mumbling in the audience. Let them say, what is? And trust me, I have no doubt that from that tender age, God was with me. Yeah. I heard the voice a little girl start singing. And that's what I did. A cappella. I start the song by myself and they better follow me. <laughs> when I started the song, they came in, you know, one yes, one. Yes. And at that time, when you try to emulate a female singer, you try to cross every T and dot every I. And that's exactly what, what I did. did. If you close your eyes, you would believe that it's Carla Thomas singing. Because I did every slur, every turn, I'm singing the melody and I'm singing the harmony at the same, same time. time. So when the audience heard all that, man, every note and every turn and every slur, the place just went up in like the roof was lifting off and I was just there giving my all. Yes. And when I was finished, my goodness, the audience, Tony Virtue was the MC, MC. Mm. and the audience insist on telling him, bring her back and, and he poor. went. And Tony Virtue told him that I didn't have anything else to sing and he <laughs> says, see him song, but I didn't go back. Oh, you didn't go back. <laughs> so everybody changed, no one, Bossy was so happy. Buttons were flying and he was right after me yes. to go on stage, the Blues Busters. Then his, the, the Baron Lee's manager, Ronnie Nasrallah, immediately wanted to manage me. But Linford Anderson was working at RGR and he said he wanted to take me down to Studio One. Sir Clement. So I left Carib Theatre, same morning, walk it down to Studio One in my little shine dress that I wore <laughs> and uh, he took me inside and I never did an audition or anything yes and I sent call the guy Uton mm. and said you know come up to Studio One and he was there so they wanted to record me right away so I said yes so Uton was there and I said let us record the song that you wrote because I would harmonize it. And he said to me, Lynette, don't bother going there, no nervous thing, you know. So I said, oh. <laughs> and guess what? He is the one who go in there and get nervous, nervous and couldn't even <laughs> sing one note. Yeah. And Jackie, me too, said, little girl, you know the song? And I said, yes. And I started to sing the song and that's how they got the chords. And he ended up not being a part of the song that he was even threatening to beat me up and all that because we live in the same yard. <laughs> but anyway, we re up until this day, yes. that song was never released. released. Any idea why? I don't know. Mm. But anyway, I harmonized the song with, you know, by myself. And we and Mr. Dodd was so overwhelmed with my voice that he wanted to get a hit song so bad yes. he had me doing collabs with Bob Marley that's where I met Bob and everybody for the first the only person I knew there was Bonnie Wheeler because oh, we went to kindergarten mm. while I was going to kindergarten Bonnie would pick me up right by my gate hold my little hand and drop me off at little school and he continued to big school <laughs> so he was the only person I knew when I went to Studio One so 
Mr. Dodd had me doing collabs with Bob Marley, Tony Gregory, the late Free Eye, and of course I met Bob Andy before I started singing 1964. Yes. I went to a rehearsal that the Paragons was doing at Rockport and um, while they were rehearsing I said to Barry who was one of the members, I can sing you know. And he said, yeah, what you can sing? And I tell him that I can sing Patti LaBelle down the aisle. Yes. So when I sang that song for them, and they came to see the one in 64, and saw me there, Barry said, Ooh, look who is there, Patti LaBelle, you know, <laughs> jokingly. Yeah. So that's how Bob, Andy, and myself got linked up back. Yes, yes. And then he started writing all these songs tell me you now melody life truly mark my word bob wrote all of those feel like all of feel those like songs jump in. Mm. everyone so we bob and myself ended up doing a collab as well so it's just a desperation to just to make me have a hit, hit song. song and the hit song never come until 67 feel like jumping oh so that was the first hit first hit song and you were about what, 15 at the time no man six yes 12 13 yeah about that yes and you became a star i don't know about the starting because <laughs> i was always one humble quiet oh, you were girl. humble up until now i don't know how i end up in show business because i am very reserved i hardly talk i'm mm, very i was very quiet not a talker, i suppose <laughs> I yeah, yeah so, I prefer to sing than to talk. Yeah, so when I feel like jumping came out, oh, did your life change in a significant way or it was Not just business really. as really. The song was playing everywhere mm -hmm. and everybody loved it and I would, you know, do a lot of performances yes. live doing that song and it made a difference. Mm. You know, people started knowing my name, you know, and hearing about me and then I did more performances than, you know, recordings, recordings yeah. at the time. I used to do a lot of cabaret shows at Sheraton on the North Coast. Yes. Because mm. I was a ballad person. Okay, okay. Yeah, I okay. love to sing ballads. Mm. And I was inspired, of course, by Aretha, Patti LaBelle. Carla Thomas, oh. Dionne Warwick, all those female singers, I love them. Nancy Wilson. Yes. I used to do all those songs yeah before we continue with the musical um, journey though sister marcia where did you attend school well i went to school at um the little prep school here in hannah town yes <laughs> then i went to chateau park that's where bonnie and i oh, okay okay yeah okay. and then i left there and i went on to senior school then i stayed a short while at st hughes okay nice 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 you said you had four because I was perf I was singing while I wasn't while, while we were in school. Yeah. Yes. So it wasn't just the concerts anymore, but you were now recording and going out yes. to perform and yes. stuff. Yes. Uh, so you start from a day of school. <laughs> <laughs> right. So now you said that you had four sisters and a brother. One died. Yeah. One, yes. Uh, what was it like growing up back then in Anatondo from a financial perspective? Poor. Poor. Poverty was a theme because my father was the only one working mm. and uh, i remember sometimes those is pound days yes and sometimes it's just one pound coming to 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 to, to feed us but my mother used to what them jamaican called turn our and make fashion we used to eat a lot of turn cornmeal with coconut milk and it was the nicest thing. <laughs> but we used to, whatever little we had, we used to make sure we eat healthy. Okay. A lot of vegetables, carrots. She used to know the nutrition, you know, and how to eat. Yes, yes. As an Indian, you know, she... Her mommy was an Indian. Full Indian. Yeah. She's Maharaj. As a matter of fact, my mother is super cat's aunt. Because you said Maharaj, you know, that kind of ring a bell. Yes, yeah. Oh, nice. Super nice. Cat's mother should call my mother aunt. aunt. Oh. So we are first cousin. Okay, nice. <laughs> Music night from long time yeah. then. <laughs> so now you were at um, Studio One with the great 
Sir Clement Cox and that. Yeah. What was he like though? Boy, that man is just one of him. <laughs> he was a one of a kind. He called everybody Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> He's one of the persons that he had a personality that attracts people and repels. It's uh, few people I know like Michael Manley and Siaga had that kind of personality, personality that attracts but they repel. Well, mm. You know how far to go. Okay. Even though they attract everybody. Yes. He was somebody that it was so interesting. He loves the music. Yeah. But him he, he wasn't a man that play around. Firm. Yeah. Discipline. Yes. So very. That, that would have helped to, to, to mold you and to, 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 to groom you. And, at a young yes, age he usually in the when he goes to America, he would come back with a lot of female albums for oh, me mm. and for the Whalers, Curtis Mayfield and the Impressions. Yes. Ken Booth was some solo, mm. you know, like different male singers, the Heptones, you know, Delroy Wilson. Yes. Because all of these. Icons were right there. Right there. So you, you never feel out of place being a young schoolgirl around these men who were some of them had big names already. Yes. But you know what? Again, God wanted me for a purpose. Otherwise, I would not have met Bob Andy. Yes. Meeting Bob Andy, I think it saved me from God knows what. <laughs> Cause here's a young girl. Not even going into teenage properly, vulnerable, and this is a male-dominated yes, business. Yes, yes. And all the guys have eyes out for any young girl coming on the scene. But Bob and myself got into a relationship, yeah. intimate. Okay, okay. And that's how I was saved. Because mm. I don't know what would have happened. So Bob was a protector. He was everything. Everything. I remember I went to Clarendon to perform with the Scatterlight, the Soul Vendors. Yes. And Roland Alfonso, all of those great musicians were part of that band. And because they could not have their own way with me, they left me on that big tree in the square of Clarendon with Bob Andy and one guy who packed the instruments. Ika man, I never forget his name. And I was told that they are only responsible for singer, not singer and boyfriend. And I am a little girl, and these big old man have children. <laughs> and them leave me out in the night. Oh, it was night. This is late night, nine, ten o'clock at night. Yes. And we were left under that tree. Because you're not submit to them. And so you faced it, though, Sister Man, say, man. Yes. You faced it. That's the reason why, in my travels through my journey through this music, I try to pass on a lot to the young, upcoming singers in the business that most of them will admit that I, you know, I was their inspiration and yes. their role model. And I try to share a lot with them that they wouldn't fall in some of the holes I fell. Yeah, that's important. And I am very proud today that I can sit here and tell you that these are some sisters that, you know, everything changed. They're not going to stand up and take no bull, you know yes, what. Yes, yes. From yes, no yes, one, yes. especially. I admire. Tanya Stevens, yeah. Queen Africa, <laughs> yes. Etana, all of these sisters are strong, militant women. Yes, yes. That even if they had no managers, and they do, they could stand, stand up, up and, and defend themselves. Nice, nice, nice. So now I feel like jumping, introduced you to probably mainstream at the time. People knew your name, people knew who you were. You were on the circuit, you were performing, right? Which song came next that? resonated with the people words words free eye and myself we did words yes and they were both two hit songs at the time mm. but feel like jumping was a bigger, bigger hit. song yes yeah. yes and then i continue to have like 
Melody Life. Melody Life, beautiful song. Truly. Yes. Mark my word. Tell me now. Yes. And these are songs that lives, lives in on. the dance hall up until to, to, to this the, day. Yes. But while you were a child, though, Sister Marcy, I had more songs than some big people in my business right now. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. And most of those songs are written by Bob. All of those songs I mentioned. Yeah, and then now it became Bob and Marcia. Well, not immediately. No, we left Studio One and we went to Harry J. Harry J. And that's 1969 we recorded. We did a re mix of the Young Gitted and, and Black. Black. We recorded Nina Simone's Young mm. Gitted and Black. And I left Jamaica 1969 with Fab Five, who was called the Reggae's then. Oh. And I, I was still a little young to be traveling. Yes. So David Banks was there as my guardian. And I went to Munich. Germany. We played a couple of um, dates. And on my birthday, we flew to Berlin. And I heard two songs playing in the studio. And I just stood there, just was lost in a dream. And I said, when am I ever going to be able to sing on something like that? Because this was an orchestra. Uh. And there was this man standing with his pipe looking like a real diplomat. And he said to me, you like them? And I said, I love it. <laughs> and he said, it's yours. I said, really? I thought he was really joking. <laughs> and he said, yes, these two songs are yours, but I have to go and learn the German language to sing it in the German. German. And they took me next door where the studio was. This is a massive studio. And I went there trying to pronounce it's the hardest language. German. <laughs> anyway, I came back to the studio and was struggling and trying to, you know. Yes do the best I could and I recorded the two songs in German and did them also in English mm. and this is a 30 piece orchestra with 12 backing vocals it sounded to me like I was in Mount Zion dreamland dreamland <laughs> and when I recorded those songs and I listened back to them it was just they nicest birthday gift yeah so i say all of that to say that it was on my return oh. to jamaica and signed a contract with this man to go back to germany. to germany but while i came back to jamaica we got word that young gifted and black was number two on the british charts and we had to fly to london immediately no I just come back to prepare myself to, to go back to Germany. Germany. And I gone to England with Bob and then RJ. <laughs> oh, RJ was there as well? Well, yeah, he's a producer. Oh, okay, okay. And we went to London, we did Top of the Pops, and mm. it was so beautiful. And to have strings, you know, it was like really heaven. And uh, we came back. And then we had to go back to London because yeah. Trojan Records had booked us on a whole lot of tours in the yes, UK. Yes, yes. So while we were touring, we ended up doing another follow up single called Pipe Piper. 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 Mm -hmm. So we had two albums now Young Gifted and Black and Pipe Piper. 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 So we toured UK extensively. And you were still a young girl. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Was it was it difficult though to keep ground to remain grounded and stay focused with, with, with stardom now covering you? No. No? How come? Because even at the stage where I went to London, I met Elton John. Yes. They were coming as well. Rod Stewart, Madeline Bell, and there were a whole lot of European talent that is big now. Not, yes. That we were all in the same boat, you know. Yes seeking you know to have its songs elton john even did a re-recording of our young gifted and black and sometimes it get mixed up 
and they have our name and their it, version uh, him, himself okay. and another girl. Young Gifted and Black was a huge success. Very, very huge. Huge, huge, huge success. <laughs> um, after the, the, the London gigs, you came back home. Yeah. How did the journey continue after coming back home? Well, it was very unpleasant on my second return to England because we had a television show in Amsterdam. And <laughs> before I could do the real life performance, because we were rehearsing from 8 o'clock in the morning, and the live, the actual live performance starts at 7 when the audience comes in. Yes. Out of nowhere comes Mr. Huber, who I was signed to in Germany, and how he found me. Maybe they were advertising that Bob yes. and Marcy is on TV and what have you. And the man insists that I am not and going on no stage unless I sign a paper to come with him right after the performance. <laughs> because he has invested money in Germany. And one whole, we had to sign the paper in order for me to go on stage. And Bob came with me and I went back with him and he was so understanding. Mm. I just went and I fulfilled a couple of the yes, dates yes, yes. and came back to London. <laughs> the, 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 the two songs that you did in Germany first, what, what, what's, what's the name of those two songs? Bleib bei mir in Germany, which means stays right here. Yes. And Alice ist anders in German, it says everything is beautiful. Everything is beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Sister Marcia. You were now not only a star in Jamaica, but you were a star in Europe. Still a young girl. Yes. You were, you were achieving things where people in the business for years I look for and still never find it. Well, I would say that because Desmond Decker was a forerunner from Israelites' time. Yes. So he had gone ahead way a couple years before. Okay. So I usually wonder what is happening with Desmond Decker, you know, because Rumors were going around that you had to make an appointment to see Desmond. So he was at the <laughs> same Trojan Records. Records where we ended up. Mm -hmm. I was surprised to go over there and see Desmond underneath him car, but I'm knocking, <laughs> <laughs> fixing him car. And I said, Desmond, it was such a good feeling to see yeah. him though, but I was always hoping to see him to tell him you know that he did such a great Good thing job. for yes. jamaica awesome. awesome and talking about that is just yesterday i was looking in the, the the newspaper and i saw that desmond decker has never been awarded never had gotten an award from yeah. the government even big youth is just now that they are honoring him big youth yes yes so you were back home now you were still at rj yeah yeah and but Bob and Marcia was a thing now. Yes. Right. <laughs> so Bob wasn't only writing for you, but you guys were now performing together and yes. traveling around the place. Yeah? Lot of performances. Lot of performances. What was Bob like was a young man? Bob loved the music. Yeah. Really loved it at another level. Yes. Because he loves arrangements. Mm. He loved it right. And I want to tell you, he opened my eyes to some real good music. Sam Cooke, The Drifters, The Temptations, Lou Rawls, Bob Dylan. Those are the kind of songs that he, he loved to mm. listen. So I was really introduced to some really, really good music. Yes. Stevie Wonder. Yes. <laughs> but Bob is one of the most interesting person that I have ever known. Yes. He is so talented. Honestly, I've never seen that kind of talent. Never experienced it. Barry Salmon is one person that I've been associated with that I see. I've never seen him with a pen and a paper writing a song. There is? Never. Just? It just comes like that. And I sat in a studio and watched Bob Rupi Edwards put a rhythm on the tape. And playing it and said, Bob, what you can find for this? And Bob went in the studio. And can I tell you that from the rhythm went on, he stood up. That time he was going through a lot of 
changes. Yes. And he started to sing the song from the beginning to the end and Rupi never take another cut. One cut. The song one called thing. The Way I Feel. One cut. He was just singing, feet searching for lyrics, melody flowing. I was just so amazed. Ass- Talent. Talent. <laughs> After um, I feel like jumping, um, Melody of Life. Melody uh, Life. Melody yeah. Life and Truly. Those were hit songs. Yeah. Early on. Yeah. When did the next hit song come for Sister Marcia? Locally. Because you had Young Gifted and Black and some multiple things over UK and Germany. Yeah. I think I moved on to Miss Pottinger. Okay. So, so it was no longer Bob and Marcia. It was, you it know, was... whenever, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. We never write off, we never relinquish that, that okay. duet. Yes, yes, yes. Just like how I never relinquish my solo career yes, at never, no time. Okay, awesome. If I'm with I3, I am still a solo singer. Bob and Marcia are still a solo, solo singer. singer. I never yeah. relinquish it. But I think I went on to Miss Pottinger, mm-hmm. high note. And I, another song I had that time was Peace Solo Man. Peace, I'm a Peace Solo Man, yes. Then I had Stepping Out of Babylon. Babylon. I'd be a classic, I really have a sister boss here. And then I had, <laughs> I had Dreamland. Dream. <laughs> All of those songs were from Miss Pottinger. Yeah? yeah? How old were you at the time though? 20 something. I never started having children yet. Yeah. I was just free. Free. Hits after hits after hits after yeah. hits. And those songs have survived down the decades and are well, still big, 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 let big, me big, tell big, you, big, big, big songs. I was watching an interview with Lionel Richie on CNN. Yes. And Lionel Richie was saying that the same new school that they call new school, yes. and they refer to our thing as old school, school, which bears them and says not old school, it's a good school. <laughs> well, the same good school. Yes. They have to go back to the Up good to, school to, they to in order to, to do the school. new school. <laughs> yes, yes. And believe me, because if you notice, even today, most of the songs that all the big artists have in Jamaica is from Studio, Studio One. One. Yes. Every Melody, single similar pattern, similar. It's the same rhythm they use. Mm. Just like I do, I shall sing. Yes. And it's Studio One's answer. Yes. That Buju, yeah, yeah, Studio everybody, One's cut. Yeah, yes, yes, every yes. artist, Freddie McGregor, name them. Everybody go back to Studio One. Yes, yes. And that's where they get the big hit song. Yes. <laughs> so the, the, the good school will never die. You never. know why? The ingredients that went into these songs, it was just purity, mm. honesty, love, Passion. sincerity, everything that is good. We weren't looking for the money. Yes. We just knew that we want to express ourselves, to give our best in the music. That's all. We just went in and it was like a nine to five job. We clock in in the morning and we're there Working all on. day. And we get one party, one Bruce's party, and that's it. That's it. So it was <laughs> nothing that we're looking for any pay. We just yes, loved it. it. Yes, yes, yes. So the ingredients that went into those songs. This, it wasn't a hustle thing like today. Everybody want the limelight and the hype and the girls and the fame. So it's just some hustle thing. Nothing like that. Our music will live forever. These songs today will never be classified as golden oldie. Yes. No lifespan. Most of, yeah, they are disposable. Very. <laughs> So the journey continued, Sister Marcia. You were still turning out, turning out hits after hits after hits after hits. And then now, because you were still with, with um, High Note, with, with so, Miss Pottinger, yeah. how did the high trees journey come about? Well, 1974, I was doing some performances at the House of Chen in New Kingston. And for some unknown reason, Mr. Dodd invited Rita, Judy, all unknown to any of us, to come and sing harmony down there on two songs he had. Yeah? 
And we all ended up there, all three of us, because I knew Rita before Judy because she came in the business a little after. Yes. So all three of us met up there and we did the recording for Mr. Dodd. So at the end of it all, I mentioned to them, I said, I have some shows, three shows this weekend. How about coming to do some harmonies? Yes. And they say, what? Yeah, man. And we come together and do a quick rehearsal with the songs were popular. So they knew them like yes, Dreamland and everything. Yes. And we, the performances went beautiful Thursday, no, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So on the third night, we decided to just do a little jam session outside of what we rehearsed. Yes. Because at the time, Sweet Inspirations group was so big in Jamaica. And the, those were the songs we jam on stage. Mm -hmm. And the audience was just jamming with us and having a good time. And they say, why you girls don't form a group? And I say, well, why not? You know, because the blend yes. that we had, was just unbelievable. Mm. Everybody compliment everybody. It was so nice. Yeah. So we decided that we would form a group. And Rita said, what are we going to call ourselves? So I said, let's call ourselves I3. Yeah. And she said, I3. I said, yes, like saying we three. Yes. But instead of saying we three, we say I3. Mm. Bonnie Whaler heard the name and he endorsed it. But what is strange is that at that particular time, Bob, Peter and Bunny were having some serious differences. Yeah, and Bunny and Peter were stepping away now. Exactly. And Bob heard that we had formed the group. Because our first performance as a group was at Arena. Reverend Blair invited us to do gospel. Yeah. And Bob heard. And right at that time when he was falling out mm. with his group, he heard that we formed the group and called us in to do Natty Dread. Mm. But prior to that, Rita and myself did Rocket Baby with him, just the two okay. of us. Okay. Yeah, because when you went to, to Studio One first, he was there. Yeah. Yeah. So you were familiar with him? Yes. Mm. And we recorded a love song, Oh My Darling. Yes, Oh My he Darling. He was one of the collabs I did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the I Trees journey. We went in the studio and did. Natty Dread and it went straight to number one and then after His Majesty passed we went in and we do Jalib and Jalib. the rest is history. It is history. We started touring, recording, albums after album we recorded. Shows after shows. Mm -hmm. What was Bob like though? Wow, I had no doubt, no doubt whatsoever that that man was truly sent by Almighty God. I have never seen a human being like that. He never cared nothing about money. He just wanted the message going out there. The people was his life. Yeah. And this man is a man that, he, he don't, Bob is the one who opened my eyes. I used to just sing and enjoy singing yeah. for fun. But it was not until I started working with Bob Marley that I realized that this is a serious business, much deeper than how I was looking at it. Yes. This is a responsibility that you have on your shoulder and you have to give account. That's what I learned from him. When I saw how serious Bob took his music, that's when I realized that this is you're on a mission from God. Yes. What's your most fun moment of Bob? All, every moment, because he can be serious right now, and in the <laughs> middle of his seriousness, he just breaks a I smile. Mm. And anybody can see it on his interviews. Yes. yes. One smile come around, tur turn him head, and he just get real screw face. Mm. How were things around the group though when he when he got sick? What was the, the mood like? What was very sad. Very sad. Very, very sad. Mm. And we were just praying that he would overcome because I tell people that I am glad I gave him flowers while he was alive. I just knew who this man was. Yes. Because the biggest audience outside of when I performed to a hundred thousand in Baltimore. Yes. I walked on a stage 
in Sweden and I saw walk out there to 80,000 people, about 20,000 paraplegics in the front. Yeah. And in their wheelchair. And these people come to hear this man because even if they don't understand the language, they could feel that positive vibration, the energy. They just know that this man is chosen and he's sent and he's spreading the gospel of the music all over the world, the four corners of the earth. Mm. You remember where you were when the news broke that he died? Yeah. Mm. How did you take that? I can't find the adjective to describe it. And I drove into Sister Judy's yard because the whole day was not looking right. Samba, bleak. Something was happening in the atmosphere and we couldn't tell what it was. Yes. And when I drove into Sister Judy's yard, she's looking to me, <clears throat> you know, to tell her what is happening. And I said, Judy, what is happening? Then we heard little things and we didn't want to believe it. Yes. <clears throat> never want to believe it. And I said, no, this could never be real. And up until this day, I am never the same since Bob gone. Yes, so that is one. He was a father, a friend, a brother. He was just everything to us. Yes. We were his three little birds. <laughs> he treated us very special. special. Yes. Very special. And I've never had experience like that. What does it mean to you though, Marcel, <laughs> to have been a part of something so grand, something so legendary? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'll ever find if that word is in the dictionary to describe. It's, these are moments that I will always cherish because I have been to the four corners of the earth from my talent working with Bob Marley, working with Bob and the I3, and even for myself. Yes. And I never take a moment for granted. Mm. I am a God-fearing person, and I constantly give God thanks for preserving me, for life, for health, for just about everything, and for knowing all these people, meeting all these people all over the world, traveling, seeing other people's culture, living, you know, going to Africa, places that we just hear about when we were little and growing up. Yes. Going to, going into His Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie's palace, sitting on his throne, ro I roll in his bed from one end to another. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. I had a ball yes. at the palace. Yes. And these are things that mean a lot to me. Mm. And I never take anything for granted. Yes. You have also lost the other Bob in your life. Yes. Recently. My condolences on, on Mr. Andy's That passing. is another chapter, boy, you know. Yeah. I never got a chance to see him. And I did everything to come and see him. We communicate daily on the phone, even when his voice was going weaker and weaker. And then the place was locked down and I never get to come and see him. Must have made it harder. Very hard. Mm. You know, but God knows best. Yes. So you found this memory of Mr. Andy? Wow, I said to him while he was sick, I said, who am I going to call when I am sad? <laughs> because nobody in this world, maybe Barry Salmon, who is a comedian himself, would know that Bob Andy. I don't know the, another person like Bob Andy. The yeah. humor. He start, if he's sitting here talk, doing an interview with you, you would be rolling on off your, your stool. Yeah. And he's not cracking a joke. <laughs> it's just the things that he's saying. Yeah. Well, Beris is another person like that. Yeah. He will just keep you laughing, keep you in stitches. And of course, we know that I've been telling people that the prescription today is laughter. Yes. If you cannot laugh, then... Makes sense. No. So I said to him, 
the, the, the memories I cherish with him is, you know, the things that no matter how serious a problem I have and I call him, I end up laughing. So that's why I asked him, who am I going to turn to? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, after Bob's passing, you would have still worked with the iTrees. And I think you guys did two albums together after his death. Yeah, yes. and we toured on those albums. Yes, yes, Hey yes, World yes. and... Because, yeah, we had two albums. Mm. How, how is um, Rita doing? She's good. She's good. Yeah. And Sister Judy? Mm, good. Good, good, good. When last you guys? She, Sister Rita just had a birthday and Judy and myself sing, sang for her. Yes. And on a video, send it to her. Okay, awesome, awesome. It's good to hear that everybody's okay. You ventured out practically solo. I never relinquished my, my solo, solo career. Yes, yes. So I never ventured out solo. You just I continue. was all I was continuing. You're continuing yeah. on the journey. Always even in my performances, I do more performance as Marcia Griffiths than I three. Yes, yes. You have done many 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 songs sister marcia many songs some that has hit some that has not hit yeah of all the songs that you have done which song would you say has done the best for you financially financially the best of the worst <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if it is a best yes it could be better if things were in the proper place okay it's okay. electric slide Elect okay electric <laughs> slide yes. yeah unfortunately it's one of my biggest songs yes because it tear up the whole of the united states biggest it's spread all, all over, over the world all over yeah. and it has influenced other dance yes. and other people doing like the the, the um mix master did a whole tape with yes and Turn to the right, right yes. and clap your hands. Mm. All that came from electric slide, slide you know. Yeah. But um, I wasn't collecting a dime from electric boogie. Yeah, that no. is shocking. <laughs> but later on, when I did the the remix with with Island Records, yes, that's when I started getting royalties from it. Mm -hmm. But um, it was just unfortunate that. If things were in the right, right place. place. Yes. You know? Republishing and stuff. That's right. Yes. What, what, how did that song come about though? Because that is not generally the type of songs that Marcia do on a regular basis. It was a happy song. It was That's a, happy a fun song. song, you know? Yes. And it's commercial. Yes, it is. That song, you know, sometimes I'll say, out of evil come it good. Yeah. <laughs> because I threes went to Canada to do a performance mm. and of course Women is a male dominated world, yes, and the women are usually treated less marginalized, yes. yes. At the end of the, the performance, there's no money, but we did go out and perform, yes. so we got $700 each of us. Okay, that's $2,100 yes. Canadian, Canadian, which is like nothing. Mm -hmm. I took my little seven hundred dollars and went downtown, and I walked to this shop, and I saw this rhythm box. It's like a keyboard this size. Yeah. And when I started fiddling around it, I love it. It had every sound, every beat. Yes. It was just so interesting. It had the Hawaii and the bossa nova, the cha cha, and it had the beat, the drum, and everything. Yes. And there was a particular sound on that rhythm box called the repeater. The piano plays ding 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 ding. I just love it. So because Bonnie and I go way back, he used to visit me and bring the best fruits from his vineyard in Portland. Yes. And I said, brother Bonnie, look on this rhythm box and listen to this, and I showed him all the different things. And then he started working with the rhythm box. And he found a beat, you know, on the, on the, 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 the box, boop, pa, boop, pa, and then he put the piano, ding, 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 to the, yeah. to the beat going, and it just locked. It locked for And sure. he recorded it, took it to Portland, yes. came back the following day, 
with a song. It was so spontaneous, we never sleep on it now, taking yes, a long time. Yes. And when we went in the studio with the what he had on the tape, we called in Sly and Robbie and they overdubbed oh. on the same thing that he had there. And believe me, it has like about 10 keyboard parts of the song and it's all from that rhythm box. Bunny played everyone. Yes. How much you paid for the rhythm box? About 300 Canadian. Oh, there are 700. That was a brave buy. That was a bit. That's why I say out of evil Nigga. come at yes. good. Awesome, awesome, because we awesome. lost and was treated badly. Yes. But I invested in this little rhythm box and mm -hmm. I got a, one of my biggest Give songs thanks. came Give from it. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. <laughs> of all the songs that you have done though, Sister Marcia, which song would you say is the song where speak to you the most? I would probably ask say a favorite song. But which, which of those songs speak to you the most? The one where you're humming in your bathroom or you wake up and you lay down and it, it comes to your mind. I don't have any one song. No? Mm -mm. Because one of my favorite songs is Survival that I recorded for the sisters. Yes. Because of the message in it. And sometimes the sisters are abused by their mm -hmm. male companions. Yes. So I did that song for the woman. Mm. And that's one of my favorite, very favorite songs. Yeah, I would ask you to give me peace, but you say your throat, so I'm gonna pressure you. <laughs> you know that song though? No, I'm not familiar with that one. I follow the other dream me like that. Like I'm just a clown. Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> you wanna see me suffer. You treat me just like you treated the ground. You trample me all over. But I'll get on my feet again Right on the way to happiness Burn all the hurt and pain In times like these Where survival is the game Let's play on Couldn't make the, the, the connection the title that you gave, but I'm familiar with the song. Yeah. Familiar with the song. Yeah, the man. others like Dreamland and I shall sing and stepping out of Babylon come quicker because, you know? Yeah. Yes. So that song is one of the songs where I speak to you the most. Well, because I feel the pain of my sisters yes. and yes. I see it up until this day. Yes. yes. But you know what? We as singers and players, we have been sending messages through our music. We beseech to people, but it keeps falling on their fears. Yes, yes. Because people are just using the music for entertainment only. Mm -hmm. They dance, they keep dancing to the beat, but they're not listening to the message. It's just now when COVID take over and the world change, everybody listening to Bob Marley, and he has the been there for years. It's not just that alone. Almost every song, Barry Salmon singing them. Freddie McGregor singing them. Everybody, Barrington leaving, name it. But nobody not listening to the message in the music. Yes. It falls on deaf ears. Mm. It is so sad. Yes. Because we are here as teachers to guide, teach, educate, and uplift through the medium of the music. But we are being taken for granted, and then you have some, you know, one and two come in the business and they're on a different mission. I don't know whose mission they're on, but it, it kind of corrupt the thing a little. Yes. You know, because music is purity. Yes. And when we are gone from this planet, the music alone shall, shall live. live. Yes. I used to sing that song in school. Yeah. Music alone shall live. Under the sun. You mentioned performing to a hundred thousand people somewhere, I don't remember. In Baltimore. In Baltimore. Is that the, the biggest crowd you have ever performed for? As a solo. As a solo, act. yeah. Yeah, it was electric slide I was doing. They have electric slide regular in Washington because that's where it was born. Yes. It was created originally from Washington. And I was up there doing the song from back in track. And when I go on that stage and I saw the 100,000 people, it was like a wave. 
everybody uh, going like that. this <laughs> and I was knocked out. Yes. I had to I couldn't sing no more. Yes. Even they had some policemen on duty and even the policemen Man, joined in the line and they started <laughs> dancing. Yes, great, great feeling. And I have a tape with a lady. She was she said she was 97. She was in the front of the line with yeah. her stick doing the slide. <laughs> because it starts in kindergarten to the home for the age. Yes, yes. Cover all the entire spectrum. All age true, group. True, 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 true. It's the longest living yes. song and dance. Yes. Where's your favorite place to perform? Wow, that's not easy because I've... Performed so many places. Yeah. But I love my Jamaican people. You love your my audience, audience yeah. yeah. I love them. Any particular reason? They are real. And you know, they, they say when you pass yeah, the test, in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it anywhere else. You can go anywhere. Yes, yes. Got them rough with you, you know. Yeah. But I suppose them, them love and respect sister yeah, boss, yeah, yeah. so they don't get the trouble. <laughs> but you know, I love them and res well, without them, I would not be sitting here talking awesome, to you today. Awesome, awesome. I mean, I thank God for preserving me, but the fans have supported me. Yes. Every time I think about giving up, and it's not a joke. Yes. A lot of times because of the abuse from profit as a woman. Yes. You know, one of the things I cherish and I could maybe pat myself on the shoulder for is when I hear, I don't want to say it with my mouth, when I hear the woman acknowledging the fact that I have been their inspiration because remember it's a male dominated business True. and I am happy that it's fairly almost 50-50 mm. so, but you're bigger than enough male artist system I say by miles eh? I said you, you would have accomplished way more than many many male artists well you know what was amazing because I just tell you that it's just the woman that would say I have inspired them and I was a role model yes. and all that, but when I hear I win, fire weird. Say, I was his inspiration. Yes. That awesome was feeling. that was nice, mm. really nice. Yes, yes. You would have worked well. I mean, you work with the greatest of them all, Bob. Yeah, you would have worked with Beris. Like you don't really get much bigger than Beris in all well, honesty. Well, I have fifty collaborations so far. With. People in the business. Singers and DJs. Yes. Some of the most notable ones are the ones with berries. If you see me crying and all of those songs. Bojo, Kotirang, Richie Bounty Stevens, Bounty Killer, Richie Stevens, Davil. Just it's about everyone. Queen I Freak, Queen I Freak. Tanya Stevens, Etana. Um, as I say, I have 50. You, Roy, Bob you, Andy. Yeah, Bob, Bob Andy. Yeah, I have 50 collabs so far. Yes. Is there anybody left where you not work with it where you probably like work with? No, Patty LaBelle promised to do a, a song with myself and Beris. Yeah? And I am looking forward to that. Platinum in our system, also. She has been. <laughs> remember Beris yeah. sing about Patty, Patty LaBelle? LaBelle? Yes. Used to make, to make me, me drift thief. away. Well, she was my uh, inspiration. Earl, yeah, you said Patty LaBelle and Clark and um, some other people, yes? Yes, and I was happy that I could tell her and we work a couple of times together. Yes. Yeah, and she has become my friend. Awesome. We talk, we communicate and she want to do the So the song soon come then sister Marcia. Yeah, yeah we wait on it now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so apart from Patty, is there anybody else outside who you know work with yet who you would see yourself going in the studio to do something with? Whether local or international? Well you know, my dream was to have Stevie Wonder producing a song for me because Stevie Wonder, he's my favorite. That man is a musical genius. True. True. That is the reason why he recognized Bob Marley. Yes. They know each other in the spirit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who knows? Because Sister Marcy is still looking young. <laughs> <laughs> You would have really? done 55 to 56 years actively in the music. I have been. Yes. Some people 
spend five months and last them in the music system and say, how has it been? How, how, how have you been able to sustain a career with so many different branches, Bob and Marcia, I trees, Marcia Griffiths? How well, has it been? Believe me as God live it. That is a million dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Honestly, I think I am truly blessed. And it's all, everything is within, you know. Yeah. Because no matter what you eat or what you wear, if your thoughts are not clean, I live for others. I don't live for myself. And I usually tell people when they ask me, how oh, I look, I say, it must be a reflection from the inside. Because Deep. your thoughts are what make you. Liberty is Liberty. not no dreadlocks and no nothing, you know. Yes. It's the liberty. Yes. It's how you live. So I don't even know how I managed to keep up. I see some young, young artists go out on the tour and then break down from the first week. Yes. And I usually do like three months out there. Straight. Yeah. Still going. Strong. Living out of suitcase. Yes. Well, every year I'm actively on the road. Last year I went back and forth into Europe five times. Yes. Twice into London. And uh, I don't like aeroplane. Mm. The world know that. But you have flown. <laughs> <laughs> All your life you have been no, flying, Marcia. All my life, honest to God. And uh, the only thing that comforts me going on an airplane is because I know that I am on a mission from God. And He's everywhere I am. And I always ask Him to order my footsteps. If He sees ahead and know that something is not right, I just ask Him to show me a sign. Yes, yes, yes. When people speak about Bob Andy, they don't speak about Bob Andy and don't speak about Marcia. When they speak about Bob Marley, they don't speak about Bob Marley without speaking about Marcia. And Marcia is a giant by herself. You have received many, many awards and accolades. In 2004, if memory serves me correctly, Toots won the Grammy. You were on that album. Yeah. How was that for you? I know, up on, you know when I know about that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah? Can I tell you the truth that tell God me the loves? Truth. Yes. Thursday, last week, Thursday, when I got the award, they sent me a, a bio, something that they had the citation yes. to read. And that is the first time I'm, I'm learning that. <laughs> In 2014, you were. Um, awarded by the government, the Order of Jamaica, Commander Class. Co CD. CD, yes, Commander Class. What did that mean to you, though? Well, it. Well, I don't know what to tell you. You know, it's a beautiful fit. No doctor cannot touch your soul, you know, but you see things like that, yes. music and things like that, it touches the soul. Mm -hmm. It rejuvenates me. It, it put me on another level of consciousness you know i just can't tell nobody how it feels yes to be recognized you know the recognition it shows you that you I are not working it. in vain and it, it must be great also to be receiving these things while you're still around well i tell them on everyone i get i said give me all the flowers now because i cannot read the, my tombstone don't scatter roses when i'm right. gone right I'm not going to be able to read my tombstone, so show me, give me now. Marcia, you would have achieved everything that music has to offer. I mean, separately from winning a Grammy individually. Is there anything musically that you have not achieved as yet that you still want? No, I don't look to anything that I want. I just live. And maybe God knows why I am not deeper within the international scene because I don't like the things I hear or I am seeing mm -hmm. that goes on. I would never do anything outside of my liberty yeah, so to get else. a position. Never. Mm. I am satisfied with where I am and God wants me for a purpose. I don't want to be a part of those 
rituals to get into no position. Mm. I don't want to be a part of that. Yes. I will just continue to do my little thing and your yeah, little thing. <laughs> <laughs> no sir. What is Sister Marcia's single greatest achievement as a musician? I just told you. Yeah? Yes. What I really consider one of my highlights yes. is to change the business from male dominated. dominated. Mm. Because trust me, it's when I was even excluding Sister Judy yes. from being someone who, you know, might I wouldn't feel that I inspired her. Yes. She told me that she was one of the persons, you know, that I inspired. She used to come to Sombrero and peep through the fence on me when I was performing yes. there. So just a thought to know that even Nadine, our little dear Nadine. Yes. I remember when she started out, she was singing Stepping Out of Babylon. Babylon and, yes. You know, they, most of them start out singing one and two of the songs. songs. Even on Rising Star today, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. most of the young girls will go up there, some drink, and they sing um, Land of Love, Love. or Dream, mm -hmm. Lana, or whatever. And it is a wonderful feeling to know that I have inspired all these little young girls. Yes. And one of the highlights for me again on the journey is to know that I have worked with three generations. Yes. And I'm still here with this generation. Yes, mm. It is an awesome feeling and mm. God is awesome. Yes. Because when I go on stage with Skip, who is Bob's grandson, grandson. Yes, Skip performing with Skip, mm. I, I find it unbelievable sometimes yes. because I work with his grandfather I work with all his sons yes and this you know, I've worked with Romy and Virgo we yes. have a recording yes. we have yes. a, a he's song. one of the collabs I yes. have yes yes Romaine Christopher all of these rising yes. star sugar everybody sugar. yes 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 you yes. know so it's really a wonderful feeling for me as I said that um, Sister Marcia, because I have to say this, you know, normally when an entertainer reaches this, the level and the status that you have, they don't normally work a lot with younger artists, upcoming artists, but you have worked with almost everybody. Everyone. Every single one. That is amazing. That is amazing. And it shows too that, because you're saying you're about the message and the music, it shows so that you're, just, you're not just saying that, you would have put in the work for sure that, because some people, them reach a level, them not really look down here so again. No, you understand? Sir. You see, let me tell you one of the things about me that people don't know. Is not you don't do your good for people to and walk around and tell people that I did, did this. That, yes. Or I am righteous or I am pure. And you have to just do what you have to do and you will be rewarded openly. Yes. And maybe that's why God has preserved me because the things I do for the this generation especially, I don't go out there and go on a light post up and say, I am doing this, I am doing that. Yes. I don't do that. Yes. But God is rewarding me. Yes. You have been doing music from your preteen, from 11 at least, mm -hmm. coming up. Is there anything else that you think you would have enjoyed doing if it wasn't for music? I used to be a telephone operator, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? But the thing that I started out doing mm -hmm. was designing. Oh, fashion. Yes. Uh, yes My yes. grandmother was a dressmaker. Yes. And I would use the fabric that people give her, and I was like 99 pounds. And I would drape my little skinny body and do <laughs> designs with them, you know, different things. Yes. And I discovered that I love to design and sew. Yes. So in my early, in the 60s and 70s, I used to design my own clothes. Mm. So fashion <laughs> is something that is dear because to you as well. Because I would hate to be on a stage performing and I look in the audience and see somebody have on the same clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, sir. So mm. I create things that are different. Yes. 
Have you ever been married? Never. How come? And it's not that I couldn't be married. I, I could I, have been I, married. I am sure that is not it. <laughs> and I am so happy I never did. Yeah? Yes. How so? I have three beautiful sons yes. and their father died. Okay, all three belong to the same father. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Mm. Errol Thompson. You were yes, Errol Th Ah, yeah. yes, 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 yes. So, how come you well, never... that was after Bob and Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would think so. <laughs> <laughs> but marriage was never something that you were... Because, you know, many young girls growing up, they, they, they dream of their dream wedding. And... I have seen it with my two eyes. Yes. People just want to put on that white long dress and, you know, yes. say they're married. Mm. But it never worked out. Yes. So I learned from others. I don't actually... Wait until things happen to me, you know. I they look at other experiences. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Looking at the journey, Sister Marcia, if you were to do it over, is there anything that you would do differently? No, to look back, I am not going to be the one to say if I knew what I knew then, no. Because yeah. that is out of the question. It's experience that teaches us, yes. that makes us who we are. So I don't know if I would want to change anything because the bad experience, I loved it. Yes. It made me into Moldy a better up. person. Yes. So everything was just right. And then we know that we need rain and sunshine to bring about a rainbow. So mm -hmm. the two things come together and it's beautiful. So if I, could be 16 again. Yes. I would never want to relinquish my if if there was a choice yes. for me to be young again and erase the memories that I have had in my journey yes. from my childhood days, I would hold on to right now and keep everything and stay at who I am. Yes, yes. Those you, memories are so precious. Golden. Golden. Yes. You actually live in Jamaica? Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. And you spend most of your time here? It depends it on depends. what I'm doing, doing because if I'm traveling, my children are in Florida, okay, so I okay. stay. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. cool, 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 cool. What have Marcia been doing recently though? I mean, with the COVID, you know, so some of the shows kind of locked down and I stuff, am, but I still am in the studio. I keeping a very low profile. Okay. I'll have, I have three albums unfinished. A gospel album at Penthouse, and I'm doing part two of the Timeless album. The last album I did with yes, Tad, uh, yes. Timeless, tribute to Studio One, I'm doing part two. Yes. And I did want to do a tribute to Bob Andy. Mm. Yeah. So you work, yes. Because so far I've had like about 11 Bob Andy songs that I've done over. Already. The last one I did that he was coming in the studio to help me to shift change up was a song that he did called Life. Yes. Mm. So you're working on those three yeah. pieces, pieces. Yeah. How, yeah. How, how the progress going on with those? Though? Very good. Mm. But you know, with what's going on, you know, in this new world, yes. we have to be very careful. Mm. Of all the producers who they have worked with down the years though, who you think was was a person who made things the most comfortable for you and your creative juices flow the easiest around? I think Donovan Germain. Donovan Pentos. Yeah. Ah. And working with Miss Pottinger, being a woman. Because ah. <laughs> yeah. Judy was also there with her. Okay, okay. Yeah. And it was easy. Yes. She was understanding as another woman and Errol Brown was her engineer and he was meticulous and when I'm recording, he mm -hmm. makes sure everything was right. It was very comfortable yes. working with Miss P and Donovan Germain. Mm -hmm. You are often referred to as a queen of reggae music. Must be a nice feeling inside. You would never hear that out of my mouth. Ever. Ever. Yeah. Never. You have never. But no that's one how can people refer to you. Yeah, I was actually crowned officially in Florida. Yeah. When By was that? the Consular General years ago. Okay, okay. 
But I but don't. You don't. You don't. No. You don't. Is it that you won't say that you don't see yourself as a queen? Or I not that I don't see myself, but I am not like that. Humbleness. I not like that. I did a dub plate. A com a, a combination with um, Alison Hines. Yes. Yeah. And she said in her part, "This is the queen of soccer," and they want me to say, the queen of "You reggae. know what? I never did that." Yeah. Mm -mm. But what, what's your um, <laughs> reservations in, in, in saying that? I don't that like to say that about myself. Yeah. I, I think it is conceited and blowing my own yeah. trumpet. Even after all you have achieved? God knows. We know that female. At I would never, if you call me here to do an interview and you want me to introduce it's myself, it's not kid. me. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes. If you don't know enough about me to do an interview, interview with me, yes, I am understand. not going to sit here and say, I am this and yeah. I am that and oh, I... Yes. No, mm. that's not me. Yes. Funny, we should go at this time. I introduced you as Lynette Griffiths. <laughs> and the world know you as Marcia Griffiths. But Marcia is not the actual name. No, it's an adopted name. Oh. Because I hated... <laughs> I don't know where my mother find that name. That name they did at back them time there. Sister I mean, you wife. know, I was watching this movie, an officer and a gentleman, and I've never heard anybody with that name. <laughs> but the wicked girl in the movie who Lynette. made the boy swallow him, the, the, him ring that him give her, is Lynette she name. Yes, yes. So how, how, how early <laughs> did you move away from Lynette to Marcia though? 60. Four. Early. Yeah. Very Just early. after Carib Theatre. Just after Carib Theatre. Because when Tony Verity introduced me that morning on Carib Theatre. Yes. It wasn't Marcia Griffiths. It was Lenny Griff. Lenny Griff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you made that conscious decision to change. Yeah. But also where the Marcia just come from though. It's just I could have said Martha because I see myself as Martha, Martha from the Bible. Oh. It's like Bob Andy. Him don't name Bob. Mm -hmm. You know, he was calling all kind of names Bob Andy Moore, this, that, and. I remember Bob we Andy all thing. missed a flight going to London because he left his, his ticket somewhere on the counter and they were announcing Robert Andy. And, <laughs> and he don't name Robert. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, you, you want the best to represent you know a nice name and that seemed to have been a stroke of genius though because just marcia griffith it just so like it, it is supposed to be and yeah. i'm sure many people out there would not have known that marcia <laughs> is not the right name yeah that's true yes yes for the young artists out there though sister marcia who probably struggling you know sometimes these days is the gunshot and the under girl thing most people they have artists out there who are putting in the work and they're not getting attraction. What kind of words of encouragement would you give to those? I've been beseeching, praying, begging to the singers and DJ who are coming in and not making a positive contribution. They're not going to last mm -hmm. because music is purity and God calls upon the singers and players because we are the only ones who can spread the gospel of the music to teach and educate. The music released Nelson Mandela from prison. Yes. The music is the most powerful weapon yes. that we have on earth today. Yes. Music is powerful. So if you're going to come into this thing here, something as pure as music, and you're not contributing in a positive way to teach and educate, especially this generation that needs so much guidance then you're going to fall by the wayside yes. that is why i love and respect bojo yes. when he came to penthouse at 18 years old i was like a mother a guide i said be careful of your utterance because it will come back to haunt you that even today when he introduced me on stage even at the stadium that's how he introduced me. It's That's how he remembers me, telling him these good words. Yes. Because if you are not making a positive contribution, 
in a world. That's why God called upon the singers and the players. Yes. Because we can teach through the music is the most is the strongest weapon. So if you are going to come in with a negative energy, you're not going to last. You're going to fade away. Yes. yes. <laughs> so all I can tell him that if they you see, we don't know who we are. We don't know our position that we can communicate through the medium of music and do so much. The music is very listen. influential. Very, very influential. Listen to me, man. I don't endorse these people who come in with some negative thing. You yes. know? Do you think you would have managed to find your footing in this a, a environment that the music is in now versus when you started? No. You see, when Bob Marley passed and there was a great vacuum for a little while, yes. nobody knew which direction the music would take. And it was there, that lull was there for so long. Out of nowhere came this hardcore dance hall and lyrics disrespecting women and all them things we used to we say how did the music reach here after all with Bob Marley and Freddie and Berries and everybody keep doing and I said to Jermaine Jermaine you see this hardcore music we're going on here all we have to do you know all the only way I could jump on this is if we're going in with positive lyrics yes. and sweet melody <laughs> and bury someone else right there with a the sweet melody. melody. Yes. <laughs> and all the songs I did at Penthouse, most of them, Berris wrote them. Yeah? Yes. The great... Closer to you, live on all of those songs at Penthouse. And I jump on those dance hall rhythm, fire burning, nanny goat, everything. <coughs> Excuse me, yeah, with man. positive. Yes. Lyrics. And those songs have <coughs> outlasted many other songs and those rhythms. Exactly. Is there anything, if you had the power <coughs> to change about the music as it's today, I know you speak about the violence and the negative influence, but if you had the power to change any one thing about the music today, to put it in a direction where you think it should go, what would that thing be? I can only say to clean it up with lyrics. Mm -hmm. Because we are teachers. And we should maintain that when it comes to music, yes. we are heard all over the world. Mm. And God told us that all my springs are in thee. He never says some. Uh. <clears throat> Everything is within. Mm -hmm. And if it is within us, we should go inside, bring out what can unite the world yes. and send it out there as a message through the music mm -hmm. in the universe to unite people because we are one people at the end of the day God is our father so we are all brothers and sisters yes. <clears throat> we just need to go within and discover what is there what is hidden yes. it's like the radio when the radio is off we switch it on and it comes on but it never it come on because we switch it on it was always there playing yes but we never turn, turn it, it on, on. we yes. can't hear it until we switch it on mm. so we have to go inside and switch on our <clears throat> inner <clears throat> inner self and discover yes is there any young artist that is in the business <clears throat> now that you see our artists in the business generally that you see <clears throat> with the potential to transcend geographical boundaries and borders and probably even remotely come close to bringing the message as far as the eye trees and Bob brought it. Yeah, there are quite a few. Mm. Chronic's doing a good job. Yes. You know, they are quite, and protege. Protege. The, the young people, the conscious ones, yes. I love and endorse them. Because that is what it's all about. Yes. If we are not sending the right message, Listen, remember, you know, the baby, as the baby born, in respond to music. True. <laughs> so true. Yes. So, so true. <laughs> so true. So if we just continue to send the right message in the music, this is like the, the whole world is a big school. Yes. 
and we are here as students to learn. So we in the position to do music and send message. We are the teachers, so why are we feeding the, 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 this generation with something to destroy them yes. and not uplift them and educate them? Good question. Sister Marcy, I know your throat is bothering you, but it would be remiss of me to come here and ask if you sing my favorite Marcy Agriphics. I shall sing if I have one line out of it. But my throat not good. One line. <coughs> <laughs> I see the breeze start blow some things in my yes. throat, you know. Pallid, are the pallid still are the pallid. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I feel it, man, tickling me. So it, 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 it oh, probably had a wonderful trade on. But yeah. despite all of that, sister, first and foremost, <coughs> um, I must say, as a younger person who would have grown up listening to the music all over, your music has been something that you know you can sit and hold a vibe to and relax and you understand there's meaning to it as well we well, appreciate the fact that at no point in time you deviated from your morals and beliefs and you had particular goals in mind and you worked towards them despite the challenges that you would have faced as a female in the industry you would have held strong held firm and your contribution to the music is immense and i know you won't say it and i know you probably, you know what I mean, but I see you as the leading female light in the music you have been for a long time and we hope that you will continue to give us more good music for as long as is possible. That really is why I, I endorse you to it. say I shall sing as, as long, long as, as I live. Like that don't have peace. <laughs> so I am usually referred, they see me as a mother. Yes. And I don't mind. Yes. You know, I don't mind because I give birth to some real nice children. Yes. All of the girls, the ladies, yes. oh, I am so proud of them. Even my little Nadine, I love her so yes. much. She was supposed to be here with us, but she's busy. Okay, because yeah, she's not far. No, she's she not far, but she, 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 she has an engagement. So. <coughs> okay. Yeah, but she, she was, yeah. <coughs> Boy, so, this throat. Yeah, I understand. So thanks for taking the time out. Right, and congratulations again on your recent award. I know you say you're waiting on the reward. I trust that that will be coming <laughs> soon. <laughs> and it is a pleasure for me. It, it is an honor. When Nadine told me that you said yes, I was, I was even nervous. And this is about my party something interview. Oh, and probably Lord. for the first time, I was nervous. I Don't am just that. one ordinary little no, humble it's, lady. It's, it's just how I view Sister yeah. Marcia. We give thanks. It's a joy. It's an honor. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure, man. You know how much time people come to my house and see me in the kitchen and don't believe it's me? Yeah. Because I'm just so... Don't I think that's earth. what people like most about yes. me, that I'm just me. I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that. How oh, come you never asked your sister was here? A lot of people thought I did, you know. Yeah? Yeah. But when I found out that the hair was the least, <laughs> and, the and it's all about liberty. Yes. Because look at today, yes. the biggest fashion in the world is dreadlocks. Yes. Not much meaning in the tweet again. True. You but, have a lovely year. You don't need but, <laughs> but um, Bob Marley is the one who influenced the world. Yes. When I went to Japan with Bob, I take a, make a vow that I would never go back there so far. <laughs> and when I went back to Japan, yes, oh us. my God, the seeds that were sown yes. there when Bob went, those blossom. seeds were grown and blossomed. Every Japanese wearing dreadlocks. Yes. The last time I went to Japan, which is like what, last year yes. or year before, I never had to take a ban. The Japanese banned them Bun. bad like. Yeah, you can remember, yeah, yeah, one of the biggest sound systems in you know, the clash thing, a mighty crown is that Japan. Right. Many of the dancehall queens recently Japan. Japan them come from. Well, can I tell you, my Japanese band that back me. Bad. And they don't take anything for granted. Yes. You believe it's a record. Yeah. They swat everything. Nice, nice. Music. I love working Shall with them. The people? Yeah. Music, Music, man. Music alone shall live. Yeah. Music alone shall live. Sister Marcia, it's an honor. It's a pleasure. Thank you for pleasure. having me. Thank you. The queen. 
<laughs> Big up yourself. Big up yourself. Better you say it than me. The whole world say it, right? The whole world say it. I know that the things that I give you some is, you know. So, <clears throat> I mean, you know, I wanted to sing a few songs for me, but you know what I think? We know what I think. Few! You know? <laughs> <laughs> so like when we talk about the songs, you know, like Jim mm. and I shall sing and am I really here? I usually close off my my interviews yeah, when I do. Yeah, with a I shall um, sing as long as I live, and as long as I live, I shall sing. I shall sing as long as I live. And as long as I live, I shall sing. Amen. Amen. This is yours truly, Marcy Griffiths. And you're watching Teach Them. Leave it right where you got it. Don't touch the dial now. Teach them to the world. Marcy Griffiths said that. Mad. <laughs> Sister Marcy. <laughs> Blessings. Teach them! Hey yo, hello! Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Like the video before you go. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. And remember to share the video with your friends and family. And browse the channel for more quality content. Until next time, walk good, my friends. Teach them!